Today, we're taking a deep dive into how stepper motors work thanks to this affordable, simple stepper motor analyzer. Stepper motors are vital to the function of any CNC manufacturing machine, such as a 3D printer. Most people are familiar with a regular electric motor, as found in power tools, kitchen appliances, and even electric vehicles. Stepper motors are unique in that they can also have continuous rotation, but they can also stop at a specific position. Today we're going to explore how they work and use a helpful new device to bridge the theory and practice. The tool we're using today is by the developer Zapta and it's called the Simple Stepper Motor Analyzer. As you can see we're on the GitHub page and that means that it's open source. Its aim is to be low cost and minimalist. And you can't really buy it from a shop but if you use the files on GitHub you can create your own. I've never tried to buy a stepper motor analyzer before but apparently they cost a lot of money therefore this one is a bargain. It's a tidy package with a touchscreen on top, a 3D printed case and then power port on the side, as well as stepper motor plugs for in and out. Underneath the skin, we can see the touchscreen, and when we disassemble it, we can see a 32-bit microcontroller mounted to a custom breakout board to handle the connections for the steppers. Powering the analyzer is very straightforward. I used a power bank, but you could use almost anything that supplies five volts because the current demand is quite low. As soon as you have power, the analyzer will spring to life and you're able to use the buttons on the touchscreen interface to cycle through the various pages. There's a settings page where you can zero the current readings and it's best to do this when nothing is connected. And there's a trash can icon on every screen which resets the captured data on the current screen and all others. Connection is quite straightforward as the diagram on the GitHub suggests. All we need to do is plug the analyzer in in between the main board and the stepper motor. To assist with this, I made up a simple four wire loom. The colors you use aren't important, you just need to make sure they match from end to end to keep them in the same order. Here's my bench testing setup and these minimal parts think they are a 3D printer. To use the analyzer, we simply unplug the stepper motor from the main board, plug in one end of our extension loom, the other end of that loom goes into the analyzer and the original plug for the stepper motor goes into the final analyzer port. It doesn't matter which of the two ports you use or which way they're plugged in, the only thing matters is that the order of the wires is intact. If you found that your stepper motor was going in reverse all of a sudden, all you need to do is reverse one of the three connections. It's important when connecting the analyzer that you do so when the printer is turned off, or if the printer is on, that you first go to disable steppers before you remove or insert any stepper motor plugs. A quick manual movement from the LCD verifies that the stepper motor is turning as it should be and that we're getting readings on the analyzer. One thing stated on the GitHub is that the connection is low impedance that are galvanically isolated. Don't ask me to define that, but I do know that it means that the circuitry for the analyzer is kept separate from the 3D printer. As you can see, the stepper motor still works even when the analyzer is powered off. Thank you to Zapta for sending me this one for free so I could make this video. If you do like the look of it, it might be a handy tool for you to have in your collection, or maybe it'll just be a nice project for you to tinker with. Now we're gonna explore how stepper motors work, and I'm opening one of mine up so you don't have to, as disassembly is generally not advised. When you rotate a stepper by hand, you'll notice a notchiness, which we'll soon explain. Let's disassemble this stepper motor and inspect its innards, starting with the item on the left, which is a sophisticated magnet. You may remember the old horseshoe magnets with their two different poles. Let's instead picture a straight magnet still with two poles and fixed in the middle so it can rotate freely. Each individual bump on this assembly is actually a magnet and we can test this by sticking an Allen key to it. Each of these magnets still have poles. On one ring, all of the magnets are arranged so that their north poles are facing out and on the other ring, it's the opposite with all of the south poles facing out. Hopefully you can see, but they are aligned so the poles are just offset from each other. When we view this from the end, we can see that we have a series of north poles and in between them a series of matching south poles. On the other half of our stepper motor, we have an array of eight coils. These eight coils are actually wired in two distinct sets, which we call A and B. 
You might have noticed on the instructions for your mainboard, the stepper motor outputs are also labelled AA and BB. This is to match the coils in the stepper motor. Each set of coils are used as inductors to create a magnetic field. That's a fancy way of saying they're electromagnets. When they're energised, each set of coils will be half north and half south. And if the direction of the current is reversed, so will their polarity. The B set of coils works in exactly the same way, having two possible states. This is another thing that we can test in real life. If I energise the coils, we can see that they turn into an electromagnet and it will hold the Allen key until I disable the steppers, in which case it falls. Just as our magnet was made from many small north and south poles, you'll notice the inner surface of each coil has multiple points that will become either north or south electromagnets. So we know we have both permanent and electromagnets inside the stepper motor, but how do we actually control them to make the stepper rotate? We know with magnets that opposites attract. So if we energize a coil, the magnet should spin to face the opposite polarity coil. If we then shut off the power to that coil and energize another, we would expect the magnet to rotate, once again attracted to the coil. If we repeat this step, energizing another coil, we can gain control of the permanent magnet in the center, activating the coils to rotate it continuously or rotating it to a fixed position. And that is the basis of stepper motor operation, turning on and off electromagnets in a controlled way to rotate the permanent magnet and output shaft to our desired position. This simple example only has eight possible positions, but luckily our 3D printers have many more. We know the internals of our stepper motors are quite sophisticated, and that means they actually have 200 possible positions, or 1.8 degrees of rotation per step. Let's watch the markings on the inside of our stepper as we rotate one step at a time. We can see that the analyzer is not only picking up the current that's flowing through the A and B sets of coils, but also counting the steps as they happen. If we keep asking for one more step for long enough, eventually we'll reach 200 and end up in our original position. My animation skills just aren't up to showing how a 1.8 degree stepper motor works on the inside. So I'd recommend this video from How To Mechatronics, which shows exactly how the pulses of the magnets interact with the bumps on the coils. 200 steps per rotation sounds pretty good on paper, but it's actually nowhere near accurate enough to control any CNC machines. To combat this, we can do some clever things when we energize the coils. Previously in our simplified example, we looked at applying full current to a single coil to turn the magnet in that direction. When we apply full current to the next coil, the magnet turns to face it. This is what we call full steps, and in this diagram we have a resolution of eight positions. So how about instead, after energizing the first coil, we then give 50% current to this coil and the next, so the magnet is attracted to both and settles in between them. By using this technique the whole way around, we've effectively doubled our resolution. These are called half steps, and in this diagram, we now have 16 possible positions. And we can take this technique much, much further. We'll start with our first coil energized to 100%, but now split the current with the next coil unevenly, with a 75-25 split. This should position the magnet in between, but slightly more towards the higher current. Next we'll adjust to 50-50, and then 75-25, and with this pattern we've doubled our resolution again. These are called quarter steps, because we've divided our full steps into quarters, and in this diagram the resolution is now 32. Comparing back to full steps, we can see the massive increase in resolution. This can continue with 8 stepping, and the much more commonly found in 3D printers, 1 to the 16th micro stepping. Sure, my diagram is grossly oversimplified, but the concept remains true. Instead of the current being switched on and off abruptly to take full steps, we can smoothly feed it on and off to gain accuracy by using micro steps. But can we use this analyzer to see this in practice? This testing bench setup has a specific purpose. All of the stepper motor drivers are the same, but underneath, I've configured the jumpers so they each have a different amount of micro stepping. Modern TMC stepper motor drivers do this in the firmware, but for a long time, this had to be done manually. From left to right, we have full steps, half steps, quarter steps, eighth steps, and 1 16th micro steps. I've set up the firmware for this board to have a matching manual feed rate for each axis, matching acceleration, max feed rate, and the correct amount of steps per millimeter for each axis, so they rotate at the same speed, 
just with the different stepping modes. As expected, the current pattern for full stepping is a square wave, with sharp edges. This is seen on the phase pattern too. When we switch to half steps, we can see that our square wave is becoming jagged and getting more round overall. Quarter stepping smooths the curve even more, and now it's starting to approach a sine wave, and the phase pattern a circle. By the time we get to 8th stepping, we're starting to get a pretty smooth sine wave and round phase pattern circle. As we expected, 1 16th micro stepping gives us a smooth sine wave and a fairly round circle. Theory confirmed in practice. So let's continue with this analyzer to assist with the task that can be tricky, setting the VREF for stepper motor driver current. Setting the current for some stepper motor drivers required interpretation of a VREF formula followed by the use of a multimeter to measure this VREF while adjusting the current. This is fiddly on a bench, but even harder on a completely assembled printer. The other problem is that we set the VREF, but we don't actually know for sure that our current is as we intend. Our analyzer gives us a real-time display of the current going through the coils any time that they're energized, which means we can make real-time adjustments on the stepper motor driver and have complete confidence that our change is happening as we expect. Furthermore, the other graphs will confirm the current that we're running with tall peaks or shorter peaks, depending on our setting. The analyzer works equally well for TMC drivers where we set our current via G-code. After making the change, we energize the coils with a manual movement and we can see the edge of the phase pattern matches the 900 milliamps we set. Let's make another adjustment, turning the current down to 300 milliamps. And as you can see, this is confirmed with the analyzer. As you're about to see, the more current that goes through a stepper motor driver, the hotter it gets. The driver in the middle is lacking a heatsink, but if we crank up the current on the X driver with a heatsink, it's still possible to get it really, really hot. Hot to the point where it overheats and turns on and off by itself, with an uncontrolled pulsing on the output of the stepper motor. Let's use the analyzer for another real world problem. Can we tell when an axis is likely to skip steps and cause a layer shift? The GitHub does a good job of explaining what each of the screens are and the type of thing you're looking for. And the one we're going to use here is the current by speed page. What we want is for our current to be even, regardless of how fast we're traveling. But if we notice the current taper off at high speed, we know we're losing torque and we might skip steps. To try this out, I tested with two printers, starting with my Core XY Secret SK Go. I raised my acceleration and feed rate limits for each axis and then printed a single wall cube at a reasonable feed rate. And here is the result of the currents by steps per second graph. As you can see, things are pretty consistent. This machine has never had any layer shifts or missteps, nor would I expect it to with these results. Next, I exaggerated the test on the end of five, having a really fast feed rate and high acceleration for these y-axis movements. I also lowered the current for the y-axis. Under these conditions, we manage to provoke some potentially problematic behavior. As our speeds increase, we can see that our stepper current drops off, and it would not be surprising if we started to skip steps and have layer shifts. This is a useful tool for lowering your stepper motor driver current to keep things cool, but still understanding where the reliable limit is. Let's use it now to observe some general purpose 3D printing. I started with a common print, a 3D Benchy. And as the first layer went down with reduced speed, it was quite interesting to watch the different graphs. Here we can see the back and forth movements required to create the solid infill, followed by a less regular section where we're drawing the perimeter of the hull. In the early stages of the print, we can see that the majority of our movements aren't particularly fast. By watching the current patterns, I can also see that my stepper motors are performing as intended. When the print is finished, we can see the distribution in the histogram has shifted with more higher speed movements. Before the next print, we can clear the stored data. Next, I tried an acceleration test piece generated by my calibration website. For the lowest segment, the acceleration was quite low, with movements being visually slow at the start and end. This is reflected in the current patterns, with some wavelengths very short to indicate fast movements and some very long to indicate slow movements. The plot in the steps chart also has rounded edges, indicating a gentle and gradual change in movement speed. Later in the print, however, as the acceleration increases, we can see a difference in the data. For the second segment of the print, we can see that the higher acceleration gives us sharper edges on the plot of the steps chart, 
and they become even sharper later in the print with even more aggressive acceleration values. Looking at our speeds for the test print, we can see we had a lot of mid-range and then a spike in the really fast movements when the printer gathered pace. So far we had been monitoring the x-axis, but here we see the analyzer connected to the extruder stepper. As the line gradually goes up, that's when we're extruding filament as normal, but then we have the downward dips, which show our retractions. There's even a specific retraction chart for this, which makes the whole retraction sequence very obvious. Pretty interesting stuff, so let's look at one more example, and that's trying to identify a poorly performing stepper motor. We know from the theory that we're looking for a clean sine wave in the operation of our stepper motors, and the phase pattern looking like a circle. I did have one stepper, however, that didn't want to play nicely, and no matter which stepping mode I used, gave this really spiky graph. The phase pattern was also a diamond rather than a circle. According to the GitHub README, this can be an indicator of a poorly performing stepper due to low current or poor inductance. This is a good example to illustrate that a tool like this can help you diagnose problems that might be otherwise almost impossible to find. If you agree or disagree with this, please let me know down below in the comments. Remember that if you do want to build your own, the GitHub page has everything you need to do so. I enjoyed making this video because I was able to improve my knowledge of how stepper motors worked, so hopefully you did too by watching. I'm really appreciative that developers like Zapta are willing to put in the time and effort to create great tools, and are also generous enough to make them open source. Thank you to Zapta, and thank you so much to you for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.